Good evening, fellow Rotarians and future leaders. It gives me great pleasure to speak to you on something that I am very passionate about, the Rotary Foundation. I trust that you will find this talk informative and inspirational. Today's talk is going to take the following outline. History, we're gonna look at the structure, funds, donations and recognition, grants, seven areas of focus, and we'll end with a summary. So the Rotary Foundation was established by the then president of Rotary International, Arch C. Klump, in 1917, whose vision was to establish a charitable arm for the work of Rotary International. And he started this fund with $26.50 US, with today's inflation rate would be the equivalent of $620 US. It was not until 1928, however, that the Rotary Foundation got its formal name. The foundation and its funds are governed by a board of trustees, the members of which are elected or appointed by the president-elect of Rotary International. They each serve a four-year term. The foundation has enjoyed a four-star rating for the past 13 years. Foundation's board has three main responsibilities, and that is to earn money, to invest the money, and to spend the money. Let's take a closer look at how they do all of this. The contributions to the Rotary Foundation go into different funds, and we will focus on the two most important ones. And these are the annual fund share and the endowment fund. So most of the money that we give as Rotarians is directed to the annual fund. We are expected to contribute to this every year. Every Rotarian, every year. 5% of the value of this fund is used for operational costs and the remainder is split equally between the World Fund and district designated funds. This change to the breakdown occurred in 2021, prior to which 45% was used for the World Fund and 50% for DDF. And this is a schema of how we made the money, how we split the money now. So 5% clearly goes to operating expenses and 47.5% to each the district fund, designated fund and the World Fund creating more money for the World Fund. Monies that go to the World Fund can be used for Polio Plus, Rotary Peace Centers, and programs of scale grants. So this is what Rotary Foundation gives back for or spends the money on. Half of the remaining annual fund goes to the district Half of the district funds can be used to fund district grants, and the other half can be used to fund Polio Plus, Peace Centers, or to help another district with one of their projects. The district contributions to Polio will now be matched by 50% from the Rotary Foundation and two to one from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, up to a maximum of 50 million per annum. So it is us to exploit this opportunity as the eradication of polio has been a signature project of Rotary International for many years, and we are on the verge of creating history. But I digress, digress back to the fund. So this is an example of our matching. So if the district were to spend $20,000 US on polio, the World Fund will match it to $10,000 and Bill and Melinda Gates will then give $60,000. So your $20,000 becomes $90,000. I kind of like that math. Pavu? So the annual fund share, 80% of the global grants are matched by the world fund. So if your club has a big global grant, that Rotary Foundation will give you 80% of the value you intend to invest. This way, the Rotary Foundation can fund more projects. 
This was due to an increased demand for grants. The foundation's annual fund was depleted before the end of the Rotary year, resulting in the denial of deserving grants. So in restructuring the matching to 80% instead of the previous 100%, the Rotary Foundation was able to free up more funds to grant more projects. And this is a schema showing you what we just said, a graphic. So if the district were to spend or a club were to spend $40,000 on a global grant, the Rotary Foundation will match it from the World Fund, $32,000 giving you a princely sum of $72,000 to spend on that particular project. So please remember to access rotary.org to make your contributions. For clarity, this is a screenshot of the donor section. So when you go to rotary.org and you click on donate, we will see the different options which include featured causes, areas of focus, endowment, and grants. Often Rotarians are confused and are not sure which box to tick, but in most instances, it would be the annual fund share. Unless, of course, you wanted to give directly to Polio Plus, as with our district's recent Polio Initiative. So we want you to focus on annual fund share because this is how we get the money back so as of july 1st 2026 any money that is not used in the district fund would be turned over to disaster response endowment polio plus peace center or the world fund so this is a decision that was made in a critical analysis of the funding of the Rotary Foundation in 2021. So with the decision to, that districts must use the money within five years, it can only be enacted in 2026. Also in July 1st, 2020, 48.8 million of district designated funds were unused. And that would be sad to have that money sitting around, not being used. All money donated to the annual fund is invested for three years with conservative portfolios favoring liquidity over capital appreciation. 82% of them of the fund is invested into fixed income assets and 18% into real estate. The annual fund performed very well, and as of 2021, had earned 6.9% in interest with an average annual prior five-year rate of 5.4%. This is how the annual fund performed in the 10 years prior to 21, 2021. Let's look at the endowment fund. The endowment fund is grown when you contribute cash or gifts, either from Rotary members and their families, or they bequest money to the Rotary Foundation. So either you put it in your will to be given, or you make an outright donation. The monies in the investment fund are invested into perpetuity. And we're basically living off the interest of this fund. These have longer term equity based investments, which yield a higher rate of return. A small percentage of the endowment fund is also used to fund foundation grants and the program. Again, on Rotary International website, which is rotary.org, you will choose endowment fund to start your contributions. And this helps to enhance the sustainability of our 106 year environment establishment. Now, typically we tend to focus on just giving to the annual fund, but I urge you as much as I urge you that we all need to do better with giving to the annual fund. I want us to start consider making gifts to the endowment fund as well. The endowment fund really 
carries Rotary Foundation. In the 2021, it had a growth of 30% in that fiscal year, with an average annual of the previous five years of 10.3%. These are the instruments in which the funder invested. And this is a breakdown or a graph showing the exponential growth of that endowment market value from until 2021. This is a comparison chart showing how both funds have performed. In the annual fund, the fiscal year earnings was 6.9% versus 30.5%. Average annual for the previous five years, 5.4, almost doubled with the endowment fund. And our annual fund grew from 426 million, increased by 11 million, whereas the endowment fund increased by from 483 million to 623 million. Funds can also be directed to Polio Plus, and this money can also be recognized towards your Paul Harris recognition. So the monies that we give to Rotary Foundation for Polio are invested into fixed income securities only, but at this time of reaching the end goal, we need more liquidity and with greater spending because you know polio is endemic is only two countries left in the world and we need a final push to get over the hurdle to immunizing more people and putting all the other measures that Rotary International supports into the eradication of polio along with the global polio eradication initiative. So in 2021, the Rotary Foundation transferred at a one-off transfer of 15 million from the reserves and the surplus of RI to the World Fund. The Rotary Foundation also took a critical analysis of its spending and were able to cut operational costs by 4.4 million. And these two moves created an additional 20 million to be available to fund grants. And also by decreasing the amount of the matching to 50% and 80%, as we discussed previously, that exercise also freed up an additional 7 million to be spent on international projects, so world projects. So we've, we've given this money and they've grown the money tremendously in beautiful funds and Rotary Foundation turns wrong and says, thank you very much. This is how we recognize you. So we're going to have recognition on both a club level as well as on the individual donor level. So in donating to, if you give, by the time you contribute $100 to the Rotary Foundation per year, you become a sustaining member. And this is money given to the annual fund. When your contributions accumulate to $1,000 or more, either to the annual fund, Polio Plus, or foundation grants, you become a Paul Harris Fellow. You can also put the money at, in someone else's name and give them recognition. So for every additional 1,000 US you donate to these funds, you become a multiple Paul Harris Fellow. So Paul Harris Fellow plus one, plus two, plus three, and at the princely sum of 10,000 US, you become a member. No, if you, I apologize, if you commit to giving $1,000 every year, you become a Paul Harris Society member. So we want to see a lot of Paul Harris Society members throughout our district. That's PHS and for Paul Harris, you know, PHF. When your levels reach, your contributions reach to $10,000, you become a major donor. And this goes up until $249,999. At a major donor, you get a special lapel or pendant. And after your contributions exceed a quarter million US dollars, you become a member of the Arch Clump Society with recognition at Rotary Fund International. I think your picture is on the wall after that. So once we start contributing to endowment fund, if you pledge or give $1,000 to the endowment fund US, you become a benefactor. 
And when your contributions or pledges reach $10,000, you become a member of the Bequest Society. And for a mere 1 million US, you become a member of the Legacy Society. So this is when you donate, those are when you donate as an individual. But if you bring your other club members along with you, not only you can perform well, but your club can also look good too. So we can have a 100% Paul Harris Club, which is a one-time recognition where all due-paying members are Paul Harris Fellows. A Paul Harris Society Club is for clubs in which every dues-paying member contributes a minimum of a thousand to the annual fund, Polio Plus, or Global Grants within a rotary year. We have a foundation giving club if the per capita given is a hundred dollars. If your club has 30 people, you must give at least three thousand dollars. Or is it 30 by a hundred? Yes. And uh, with a minimum, each member of the club has to give a minimum of $25. But all members, all due paying members have to contribute. A Rotary Promise Club is when all members promise to contribute to the foundation's endowment with a minimum contribution of a thousand US. Every Rotarian every year club would be recognized when each person must contribute at least $25 to the annual fund and there must be a minimum of a hundred dollars per capita again for the, for the club. So some people will give a little bit more. So if you have a few Paul Harris Society members in the club, it will up the per capita. So the district will also recognize the top three per capita contributors to the annual fund, but each eligible due paying member must give a minimum of $50 per person. And Rotaract can give $100 or more annually and will get a Rotaract gift giving certificate. So we have seen how Rotary is formed. We've given money to it. We've seen the money grow. The Rotary has recognized us for it. And what's left now is for us to spend this money. So spending in the Rotary Foundation or as part of your club will take the form of spending in global grants, district grants, or disaster response grants. Global grants tend to be large, greater than $30,000 large scale, sustainable, measurable, and remember they are matched by the World Fund to 80%. We have an entire separate talk on district grants, so we won't dig into it, but they are less than $30,000. They tend to be smaller, single pay payments, and they align with areas of focus. And remember, your club must be contributing to the annual fund within the last three years to be able to even qualify for any of these grants. Disaster grants support relief and recovery efforts in areas affected by disaster. And our most recent example of that would have been the volcanic activity in St. Vincent as a major disaster. Of course, we're in the Caribbean, a lot of the islands are also in a hurricane prone belt. So we need to stay prepared for disasters. So Rotary International has seven major areas of focus. So when we plan the projects that use the funds or apply for grants, they're ideally realized within one of these seven areas of focus of the Rotary Foundation. And for reminders, we will list the seven areas of focus, peace building and conflict prevention, disease prevention and treatment, water sanitation and hygiene, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, e community economic development, and the most recently added was the environment added in 2020. In our district, we have a program called Youth and Peace in Action. For now, this is only in the English speaking part. Um, English is offered in, the Eng English, in English only. 
for disease prevention and treatment, the district has a childhood obesity program, not necessarily using Rotary Foundation funds, but it's just examples of what the district is doing currently. We have several projects for basic education and literacy. One that comes to mind would be my Rotary Club, the Rotary Club of Antigua. We have an ongoing program called Computers for the World, in which we partner with another Rotary Club, Rotary Bellevue Breakfast Club from the United States, and a third party donor, where we provide computers in every single school, computer labs in every single school in Antigua. So this is an example of a global grant that has been working for years. In our district, we are also looking at climate impact, which is led by Matt, not necessarily either a global grant. So when you're looking at projects, it's not always easy to see which ones are using grant money. So most recently introduced to, we have programs of scale, which provide Rotary members with longer term resources to implement large scale, high impact programs in our areas of focus. Together, we seek to increase our impact by measuring our progress and sharing the learning generated from our programs throughout the Rotary world. So the programs of scale have to be measurable and impactful. And it's a more complicated application process. A lot of this information is available on rotary.org. And currently the only programs of scale that is, has been granted or enacted is trying to create a malaria-free Zambia. So as you can see, it's a mammoth task, but we need to continue to think big and to, to go for these change, um, life-changing projects. So the Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown did a project in which they went to the district communities, to the health centers and asked them what they needed got a list and provided what they needed. So remember, Rotary's giving has to be um, has to be based on needs that are identified as well, not simply what you think the community needs, but uh, needs impact has to be done. So um, fairly attractive middle-aged woman took a flight from Antigua to London and after using the bathroom, felt dizzy and fell. What happened, what she hoped would have been a sprained ankle turned out to be a complex fracture requiring surgery and two months of non-weight bearing. The Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown was able to provide a loan with board wheelchair and crutches to help. So this, this person who ended up needing help from Rotary is none other than your presenter, Sharon Cordner. So as a major donor, I never thought that I would be the recipient of Rotary's generosity. I mean, not giving to receive, but you never know when the person who is on the other side of the receiving is somebody who you know, some member of your community, and as it turns out, yourself. So let's summarize. The Rotary Foundation is an integral part of the success of Rotary International. It is the engine that funds the wheels. The funds have been responsibly managed with a high rate of return for districts that contribute to the funds. The success of the Rotary Foundation is dependent on your continued support, both in terms of the money you send, but also in terms of your sensitivity to the, to the prevailing needs of the communities that you serve translating those needs into meaningful projects. Again, I thank you for the opportunity to present and for your attention. Let us all continue to create hope in the world. Thank you. If you'd like to reach me, this would be my contact information and uh, I invite you to let me know what your questions are. Thank you very much, Past Assistant Governor Sharon. Lots of information shared, lots of numbers, but excellent job. 
in, I would say, simplifying, you know, the, the whole concept of, of global grants is something that we, as clubs, individual clubs, see as something, you know, way beyond the club's reach. I think you have done an excellent job in breaking down what seems a very complex topic into a very simple, simple format. I got quite a lot of it. I took, you know, quite a lot of notes. I think all Rotarians in the district should be very proud of the way in which our contributions are managed. Uh, Sharon did an excellent job uh, in showing, you know, how prudently RI treats our monies. And not only that, uh, how how they they also are very very prudent and strategic in how they disperse funding also for the benefit of you know persons around the world. So excellent presentation. I know we have some time allocated on Thursday where we're going to be going over some questions, but there are a couple that were, there's one in particular that was put in the chat, which I would probably want to, um, as we have it now, I'm sure there are going to be much more questions coming on, uh, you know, in your minds before the end of the session. There's one that's asked here, are capital projects, for example, building construction, uh, acceptable or considered for grants as they seem to fall as they don't seem to fall under any of the areas of focus. Sharon, you want to give your thoughts on that one? Capital projects, where does it fit? Would it be considered? So I would think if we had the courage to say, create um, a big project, like create a dam to help with the water situation, create a water desalination plant, you're directly addressing an area of focus, which would be water and sanitation that would require infrastructure, something being built. And it can be, but a lot of the projects that we do don't require it or won't justify it. And I know it's always been a tricky spot in, in our club traditionally, where we don't believe in bricks and mortar investments, although we ended up inadvertently building a library for one school and it worked, but it wasn't done on grant money. But I think we need to actually think big. And in thinking big, you will have construction involved. So programs of scale will definitely involve something. With con I think that's what she meant, right? Or with, um, or if we just took on a bigger project, we need to think big and we need to contribute and get it back and do something meaningful with it. Yes. That's my answer. We just need the projects of that scale. All right. Maybe a quick response from any of the other um, PGGs who are on the call. Any thoughts on, on capital projects, construction projects? Maybe PDG. Who do we got? We, we got PDG Roger, PDG Dave. Either, it's, either would be fine. It's all, your thoughts are always welcome. Um, I'll speak if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, um, I think um, it, some clarity is required on what you refer to as capital because I also heard construction. And I think the question might have been more aligned to construction. Having said that, um, there has always been a not, how should I say, um, a, a deference not towards uh, um, construction projects when it came to global grants. Um, I think that every global grant is a different application. And so the details of what the project entails may or may not have that facet to it. However, if the entire project revolves around, we would like to build a building, um, then the answer is no. So they do not directly fund construction projects, but some specific global grant application and it will be determined based on its merit. Thank you, PDG Roger. So I think we're right on time. Um, all the kudos are coming in. 
for a wonderful presentation, Sharon. I'm sure we're going to have lots of lively discussion on Thursday centered around what you shared uh, with us. So we're ready to slide into our second presentation for this evening. And I'll ask District Secretary-elect Annette to do the honor of introducing our next speaker. Good evening, fellow Rotarians. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce PDG Wadi, who was born in Suriname. He is an entrepreneur and he joined the Rotary family as a chartered member, as a chartered member in 2002. Um, and that was the Rotary Club of Paramaribo residents. He has served in many club and district positions. PGG Wadi is passionate about the foundation and its impact on the region and internationally. He really got involved in Rotary when he, uh, when he was asked to join a water sa sanitation and hygiene committee for his club. PDG Wadi is currently the district Rotary Foundation chair. He is a Polio Plus Society and a Paul Harris member and a major donor level two. PDG Wadi will be presenting to us today on district grants, small and simple. We look forward to your president, presentation, president, PDG Wadi, and it is at this time that I will ask you to please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, District Secretary-elect <clears throat> Annette. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, all protocols observed. And uh, may I thank Sharon for her wonderful presentation uh, about the Rotary Foundation. Thank you. So tonight's uh, presentation is about uh, district grants and the uh, subtitle for, that, for this one is Small and Simple. Uh, usually uh, when I speak to Rotarians, uh, club presidents and, uh, and, and, and others, uh, I promote district grants because, in my opinion, they are really small. They are small and simple to get in, uh, in comparison, for example, with global grants. Second slide. Next slide. So, as uh, already said, uh, district grants are small-scale projects. They are they addressing immediate needs in the local community. And one thing I want to uh, stress is that it's a matching grant from the district. Uh, at least uh, because what happened, why I'm saying this is because, uh, for example, last year we had uh, applications uh, for, let's say, a budget of 28, 29,000 US dollars. And um, if that's the budget and, and, we, and the district grant will be the sole funding up for that project, that that would mean for us in our district that more or less 60-70% uh, of our uh, district funds will be going to just that one project. And district grants are not really uh, meant for uh, just one project. They are meant for small scale projects within the district. As we already uh, uh, heard of uh, uh, past assistant governor Sharon, is that there should be alignment with the seven areas of focus, the foundation uh, yeah, uh, goals. And it's a single grant awarded annually. So there is just a one time uh, uh, in a year you can apply and if granted, will be disbursed to the club. Next slide. Next slide, yeah. So, yes, uh, so that's why I call it, it's small, but it is also simple to get, yeah. But first of all, of course, since we're working with uh, other people's money, with Rotarian donations, uh, we need to, uh, the club has to, like any other organization who's working with other people's money, should take care of what 
uh, the what the requirements are. The first requirement is for us in our district is that you have to be up to date on paying RI dues and district dues. Yeah, so it's these uh, three, four uh, requirements are very critical uh, to apply if you want to apply as a club for the district grant. You have to, your uh, dues have to be paid and also your district dues. Be up to date on any previous grant report. Very uh, special. And you have, you need to have contributed annually to the annual fund over the last three years. That is something specifically for our district. Not e every district uses this as a requirement, but we in our district, we do this. So that's very, uh, why? Because of course, as we have seen uh, from the former presentation, is that out of the annual fund, we get the funds to uh, disperse district grants. So to, to keep on uh, having these funds, uh, of course, we need contributions uh, from our uh, clubs. Next. Very important, and in fact, most importantly, is that the club, has to sign a memorandum, club memorandum of understanding. And it has to be signed by the club president and the president elect. So the, the current president and the incoming president, they have to sign this uh, MOU, memorandum of understanding with the district. And uh, in our club, in our district, sorry, in our district, this has to be sent to the district grants subcommittee chair no later than the 30th of June, to, uh, 2023. Yeah. So at the end of this rotary year, uh, the MOU has to be signed and sent to the uh, district grants subcommittee chair in order to be eligible for a district grant. Very important. Uh, let's say, uh, requirement. If no MOU is signed, we will, uh, yeah, we cannot grant or at least take in consideration the project you want to, uh, the project you're presenting. Next. What is the MOU? The MOU is the agreement between the club and District 7030, and it, it acknowledges that the club will undertake measures to ensure proper implementation of grant activities and proper management of foundation grant funds. As I said before, uh, this, is, this MOU is very important, and uh, this MOU, signing this MOU, will qualify the club uh, according to uh, Rotary Foundation rules, Rotary International rules, to get any fund out of the foundation. Because proper uh, implementation of grant activities, for example, if you're asking for a, uh, your, your, your proposal is about, let's say, um, oh, doing something in education and you, you, you're using the funds for something totally different, then uh, you can see that it's not proper implementation of the activities that you have put in your uh, proposal. Another thing is also, is that the, fund, the, the grants, the funds that you get from the, from the, the funds, the, the funds that you get from the grant, uh, they have to be uh, managed properly too. Yeah. So uh, once again, we're working with people's money. People have, the Rotarians have donated their money to the foundation. And of course, we want proper uh, management of those funds. Thank you. Next one. Next. Next slide. Is the club qualification? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that's on. 
Are you oh, not sorry. after this? Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, so you must, uh, this, so to participate in the grants in the Rotary Foundation Graduate Club must agree to implement the financial and stewardship requirements in the club memorandum of understanding and send at least one club member to the district's annual grant management seminar. Uh, I al already elaborated a little bit on, on, on this. Stewardship requirements, and uh, that's very, very important uh, within, um, yeah, let's say, receiving foundation grants, and not only for district grants, but also for uh, global grants. Next. Part of this uh, stewardship is the club must have a written financial management plan, which shall include procedures to maintain a standard set of accounts, include a complete record of all receipts and disbursements of grant funds. In fact, this seems all these, let's say, requirements seems, uh, yeah, uh, see, it could be uh, give you the feeling that there are a lot of requirements. But I want to stress once again that once we are using uh, funds from, uh, from the foundation, uh, that we need to have proper uh, procedures in place for our, uh, for the fi financials, for the funds we're using. So that's why any club, and in fact, any organization, any good uh, running organization needs a written financial management plan. So it's not really something new. It's just something that is, uh, is stressed by the Rotary Foundation uh, for using, yes, donations from uh, Rotarians. Second, next one. And a part of the financial management plan is also if you're buying things, uh, assets or whatever, I mean, uh, you need to have an inventory system, for example, uh, uh, as was in the form of presentation was uh, talked about uh, computers then if you're using or if you're buying computers with the funds you need of course uh, have an inventory system knows where these computers are uh, and uh, so that we know that uh, they are we, they are reusing according to the proposal and according to the project and of course ensure that all grant activities including conversion of funds comply with local law. So for example, uh, let's say, for example, in Suriname, uh, if we get US dollars uh, from the funds, we don't need to, we, we cannot, let's say, go to a, a uh, what we call a cambio exchange, uh, foreign exchange office outside of the banking system or let's say our, uh, our friend who can convert these uh, funds into SRDs in Suriname, Suriname dollars, because then we don't really comply with the law. Next. Oh, very important, if you're talking about stewardship about, of the funds is, that you have to maintain segregation duties for handling funds. Who's signing, who's the signatory on the, on the, on the, who's asking for the funds within the project, which Rotarian, and who's signing for disbursing of these funds. There should be a segregation. Next. Upon successful completion of all these qualifications, requirements, the club will be qualified for just one year. So every year there is a qualification process. Yeah. And, and, uh, and to maintain that stat status, the club, the club must comply with a signed MOU and additional district requirements and 
Rotary Foundation policies. Yeah? Uh, the club is responsible for the use of funds for club-sponsored grants, regardless of who controls the funds. So in the end, it is the club. It is not... Uh, Hello. Uh, oh, we have I'm lost hearing. PDG. We have lost PDG Wadi. Since it was in, in internet. Oh, okay. I was wondering if it was me. No, it looks like it's internet. Must be internet connection. Okay, yeah. let's give him a, a few to come back so, on then. Yeah. Let me, um... I wonder if he had a, a power outage. I know the other night, oh, that was Elvin was mm -hmm. on. PDG Elvin was on in a in a blackout. Yeah. Can you try calling him and then I'll update y'all in two minutes. Okay. Okay, he's he's joining back now. Welcome back, PDG Wadi. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All of a sudden, I was out of the meeting. I don't know. This is this must be Murphy's laws. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Uh, so once again, qualified status for one year. You have if, if you want to maintain qualified status, you must comply with the signed MOU, all the requirements in the MOU, and uh, very important is that the club is responsible for the use of the funds. So anytime the foundation or the district will go back to the, the club if there is something uh, with regard to the funds uh, and the club will be responsible, not Rotarian A or B, who are maybe the project leaders. Next slide. Your club can be disqualified, of course, or suspended or revo revoked if uh, during the project uh, uh, misuse or mismanagement of the grant funds is, is happening. Uh, the club must report any potential and real mess issue or mismanagement of grant funds to the district. So once again, it's a club uh, issue, it's a club uh, responsibility to uh, make sure that uh, stewardship is uh, adhered to with regard to, to grant funds. Next. Okay, and now the grant application form. Uh, the grant application form, uh, which will be distributed uh, soon to the, to the clubs in the district, uh, We'll ask for information as what will be the outcome of the project, the number of beneficiaries, uh, which communities, maybe you have another partner, another Rotary Club uh, in the district or outside the district, but also other uh, NGOs or companies. And uh, of course, uh, how many uh, Rotarians and Rotary actors are involved in the project. Next. And the grant application also uh, has a, a project budget. You need to submit a project budget. And of course, uh, outline in US dollars, uh, for example, these line items as labor, supplies and materials, equipment, training, and whatsoever. Next, 
project funding. Um, as I said in the beginning, it's it's it must be seen as a matching grant, and especially if it's a larger uh, project. For example, you're asking your budget is about twenty thousand dollar. Don't expect from the uh, the district to get uh, all that twenty thousand dollars. We cannot, in fact, and um, so what will be the uh, the what will the host club bring into the to the uh, how will you source the the budget how will you source the budget it could be part from the club from other clubs other rotary clubs and other resources and in the end it's a matching from uh, the dis district out of the district uh, designated fund ddf so called next The timeline of the application, the deadline for the application is the 30th of September, 2023. Yeah. Very important to keep in mind that there is a deadline. So uh, at the, before the end of uh, this year, so the latest 30th of June, we need to have the, uh, the signed MOU from the club. Yeah, that because that's a very important and most important uh, uh, requirement to be qualified. Uh, and uh, the deadline for the application is 30th of September 23. You have to submit it by email to the district grant subcommittee chair. And in, in that uh, email, you have to copy the Rotary Foundation chair and the DG and using the grant application form that we will disperse uh, very soon. So, uh, next. The decision will be two weeks after uh, the 30th of September. Within two weeks of close of applications, there will be a review and either accept or decline the applications. And uh, the district grant subcommittee chair shall notify the club of the decision, either a acceptance or a decline of the, the application. Next. What happens is that when uh, the approved uh, district grants, they are, uh, the DG will then, let's say, uh, have a, uh, apply for a block grant to the Rotary Foundation. So all the district grants that have been approved, the total sum will be, uh, will be, uh, we will apply for that uh, to the foundation. And when the funds are released to the district, they are disbursed to the clubs. And the entire process should not take longer than two months. Next. Very important uh, is that the contact person on the grant application must report to the subcommittee chair uh, the progress of the project, but also uh, and with, with, with uh, photos and other uh, uh, commentary on progress and expected time for completion. Next. And then, of course, at the end, uh, a final report to the district subcommittee chair via email within one month of completing the project, including all appropriate received bank statements showing the use of the funds. That was it. Um, in, 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 in summary, we can say, yes, it's small, but it is, it is simple. Uh, once your club is a smooth uh, and good running club, I mean, if you have all your financials in place, uh, as you should uh, have, of course, as a good running club, uh, then all these requirements that seems maybe a little bit uh, a lot can can uh, still it's easy 
to uh, to uh, to adhere to them because you already have them in place. So it seems overwhelming. Maybe uh, I've talked a lot. I've uh, mentioned a lot of requirements, but in fact, once again, a good running club should have a, a written financial plan. Should have separate accounts for admin and and uh, just operation and 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 charitable uh, uh, events for projects uh, and things like that. Segregations of accounts, segregation of uh, handling the funds, things like that are normal, should be normal practice within a club. So uh, with that, uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you much, very much, PDG Wadi. Again, a lot to chew on. Uh, thanks very much for a very explicit presentation on district grants. I know we have heard many presentations before on district grants, but this, you know, is maybe as, as simple and, and concise as what we would have heard before. And I'm sure it, it has uh, invigorated many people to, you know, to, to think about district grants. Maybe that uh, as they would have never done before. So we came in a, a few minutes earlier. So maybe there is one question that we can we can take, and then we're going to move on to the next item. And that is when when's the next? Uh, you mentioned one of the requirements being each club must be represented at the district grant seminar. When would be the next uh, seminar? This is something that we still have to decide uh, together with uh, district trainer elect. Uh, of course, there is also on, in the learning center, there's a, a grant seminar uh, and depend, sometimes district will, uh, will take, uh, will say that that is enough if you can show proof, if you can prove that you have done that grant seminar. But still, it's a decision uh, the district has to make, the, the district leader team has to make. And, uh, but shortly we will uh, advise the club which, uh, what, what exactly will be happening. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we are right on the button where time is concerned. So I'll ask Rotarian, or oh, this is, uh, Leah, this is where we're supposed to put on our big smiles for the roving photographer once more. Yes, oh. but before uh, that, I see PDG Davis. David's hand. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Good evening to all. Uh, just by way of suggestion, what we have done in, in some cases in the past is one of the slots at the conference for the foundation could be turned into um, a seminar um, to sort of fulfill that obligation, just, just as a recommendation. Okay, answer that, PDG David. Right, so we have uh, some announcements and that's going to be shared by Rotarian Ryan. Okay, yes, good evening again, fellow Rotarians. So reminder for Thursday's discussion session, which is from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we encourage to bring questions to ask during our Q&A session, our Q&A panel session, uh, which we would have DG Brian, DG Wadi, and Zone 34 Regional Coordinator for TRF, Sandra Hempstead. We are also encouraged to invite incoming TRF directors to the discussion session as well. Um, and there's also a reminder for us of where we can access PETS material on the district website. Um, I think Rotarian Ryan, Ryan um, would have sent the link. If not, um, Rotarian Ryan, could you also reshare the link again, please? I'll be sure. I don't think he's back yet. Okay, all right. Uh, back over to you. Thank you, Kazi. Thank you very much. Right, and just remember, as you would have for those who would have attended and participated in the in the in the discussions, 
a lot of useful information is shared. Lots of good experiences are shared uh, amongst members from the different clubs. So it's really a tremendous learning opportunity and environment that you don't want to miss out on. Uh, that provides, uh, I mean, a really, really good way to wrap up the, the topic. So we look forward to seeing all of you, those who may not have attended, who you know would not have attended today for whatever reason, if you can also encourage them to, to attend. So as we wrap up today's session, um, we did put in the chat the, a link to, the, to access the materials. So if you, I know it was a lot to take in today. You could have only you know, written your notes at that speed, but much more came your way. So please make use of the link and the information that's posted. So as we bring today's session to a close, uh, I would ask DGE Brian to do the honor of sending us off. DGE Brian. Okay, I am now unmuted, thanks. <laughs> um, well, we had two excellent presentations by past Assistant Governor Sharon and PDG Wadi. Very informative and very well delivered. And I think from the comments that I'm seeing on the chat, it was both, the, both presentations were very well received. And Sharon is showing us her pet. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, so to everyone, have a good night. Thanks for joining us. And as Amy said, let's try to get, encourage more participation next week. Participation was good this week, but not good enough. We need everyone on board and, well, not next week, Thursday. So have a good night, everyone. Thanks for attending and see, you all, see everyone on Thursday. <laughs>